going on? Got one person in the chat. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Make sure you hit that like button and let me know who, uh, who I'm talking to. There we go. Right now, I'm currently fixing my son's front tire. Okay, d Mass, what's up? What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, man. What's good with you, man? How you doing? Like I said, right now, I'm just fixing my son's inner tube on his bike. Man, it's a trick, right? How many people don't know how to, or how kids these days don't know how to fix their own bikes? Nah, I'm not talking about my son, but I'm just saying in general, I noticed that uh, kids these days don't really be knowing how to, you know, fix a bike. Oh, well, just finished making the kids dinner. Okay, that's what's up, man. Yeah, man. Big father shit right there, man. That's what's up. Man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. For sure. Yeah. Always had to, man. I used to know how to, man, I could put a bike together, take it apart, take strip it all the way down to the frame to where you could paint it and then put everything back together. Yeah, it's a trip. Like you said, back in the day, we had no choice but to do that. Kids nowadays just don't know how. Yep. But we had more people in the chat. They'd be able they to learn something, how to change their attitude. So easy. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I don't even know how he, uh, I don't even know how he did this. Nonetheless. But anyway, so the topic of the day is monster fish. Monster fish, y'all. I want to know what is considered a monster fish and what makes it a monster fish. Or people in the chat, come on now. Let's get those likes up. But yeah, so what makes a fish a monster fish? Like it's holding air. There you go. I even know how to, you know how to patch it right there. Little, little puncture one. Yep. All right, so all good. But yeah, what y'all think? We can get this started. We ain't, we don't have to wait on anybody else. Let's get this going. Let me know what y'all think a monster fish is. What makes the fish? A monster fish. Is it the size, the personality? What? Come on now, we got seven people in the chat. My boy D Mass, the only one that's talking. What's going on, y'all? Y'all just want to spectate? Y'all want to see what I'm doing? I'm changing there too, fixing my son's tire. Why don't y'all hit that like button? All y'all got to do is just start typing, get in this conversation. Otherwise, y'all pretty much watch me. Thank you, number four. Thank you, number four. But yeah, make sure y'all hitting that like button. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if y'all are not already. And uh, feel free to join in on the conversation, y'all. Thank you, number five. Appreciate it. Join in on the conversation, y'all. What y'all spectating for? Just want to sit here and watch me fix this inner tube? That's cool, too. You could do that as well. Because I already know that I got an answer to that question. But I want to feel y'all out. I want to see what y'all got to say. See what y'all think. Nine people, five likes. Can we get some more likes? Make sure y'all are subscribed to the channel. I guess I could just keep saying that over and over again. Make sure y'all are subscribed to the channel. All that good stuff. Oh, this is only a 12. They didn't even have a 12. Ah, there we go. Sick. We got oh, still the same amount of likes. Damn. This is not going to work. Needed a 12, not a 12 and a half. Well, looks like I won't be able to fix. I should have bought a patch. Should have just bought a patch. Could have fixed it. 
It's all good. It's all good. Take this back. Get my money back since it's not the right size. But yeah, there we go. What's up? We got we got two more likes. I appreciate you, six and number seven. But yeah, what's going on, y'all? Just I just spectating today, huh? Y'all just want to spectate. All right. So what y'all want to talk about then? Since y'all don't have anything to say on this topic, what y'all want to talk about? Let me know. Let me know. Hey, Cleve, did you give me back that receipt? I got to take back this um, inner tube, man. It's not even the right size. I'm not going to take it back right now. I'm on live, but I just want to know if you uh, I don't think you gave it back to me. <clears throat> Should have bought a patch. Patch kit. Yeah. Um that inner tube I bought is too big. I needed a size. I needed a 12 inch, not a 12.5. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come on, Papa. Come on. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. That's all good. All right, that's what's up. We got 14 people in the building now. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Make sure y'all hit that like button when y'all come into the chat. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. The topic, everybody quiet so far. Come on, we got some new people. Hopefully some people want to do some talking. We got a topic today, y'all. What do y'all consider to be monster fish? What do y'all consider to be monster fish? What makes a fish a monster fish? Or... So, Junior, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We'll come up with something, y'all, that y'all want to talk about. Let me know. Let me know what y'all want to talk about then. Man, just knew that I was about to be able to fix this energy too. Anything? Okay, Junior, what's up? What's up? All uh, right, yeah, shout out to Los Angeles, man. I appreciate you for tapping in. Junior, tell me this, man. What makes a fish a monster fish? Huh? What makes a fish a monster fish? What do you consider to be monster fish? Is it the size? Is it the aggression level? What is it? Anything? Anybody? Not that many people on the chat. Everybody want to spectate. Nobody want to say anything. That's what I'm talking about. Track Nick, I appreciate you. Thank you for asking the question, man. Damn. Yeah, it seems like it's uh, like pulling teeth today. But yeah, anything over 10 inches? Okay, I could agree with I could agree with that. That seems to be a big fish. It don't have to be a four-footer or three-footer or nothing like that. You got some examples? There we go. Thank you, chat. Man, I swear it's been hard to get the folks to actually comment. Thank you very much. Evan, what's up? What's up? Jamie. Okay. It's aggression, potential to be, be on their own, excluded. All right, Jamie. I like I like your answer. I like that answer. B Mats. Yeah, because our parents definitely wasn't just buying the bike. Never like having two eggs in Yeah, I agree, D-Math. You say limp and appetite. Okay. I could agree with that as well. I could definitely agree with that. Yeah, um, it's it's crazy how, you know, typically people think that just size make a fish, a monster fish. But, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that to be the case. I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, personality definitely makes a difference. Um, you know, whether or not you have to keep the fish alone, I could agree with that. And as far as size, you know, anything anything over a foot, I think is pretty pretty damn big. Pretty damn big. Um, you know, people always think like tank busters have to be three three foot, four foot. That's just that's like a river monster. That's that's something that's usually would that would that would usually be inside of like a public aquarium. 
not a in home aquarium. But yeah, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. What we got? Uh, take that off. Evan, how much inches is your biggest fish? My biggest fish, Evan, is my arowana. Um, Kobe is like 30 inches. He's big. He's a big boy. So um, that's my biggest fish, followed by, believe it or not, my other arowana. My other arowana is actually the second biggest fish. Probably like 20 inches. And then I got some 16-inch John Garami. I have some 16-inch clown knife. Uh, but yeah, my two arowanas are my biggest fish so far. Ella big. I have a line that's about eight inches. And when I tell tell you dude is a beast, appetite is crazy and owns the 46, 46 gallon he's in. Mm-hmm. How big is he though? Right, Evan, for sure. Tyson, what's up, Cleveland? Hope your family's been good. Yeah, Tyson, we doing good. We're doing good over here, man. The weather, oh my goodness. Let me see if I can get out the way. You see the sun coming through. It's it's a nice ass day outside today. Yeah, it's nice out here. It's nice out here in Sac. Got to figure out how to cool these uh, fish rooms off. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's good. We're good. How about you and your family? Hope everybody is doing well. Jamie Scott, Jaguar, Cichlid, Dovi, et cetera. Arowana is a monster fish. Yeah, of course, arowana is a monster fish, and they get they get massive in size. So um, they have the aggression, they have the size, everything. So arowana is one hundred percent considered to be a monster fish. Um, typically, a jaguar isn't, you know, dovi really isn't. Um, but I could agree when we're talking about, you know, large predatory fish that, uh, you know, that's one of the ones to be considered. Yeah, just don't really consider those monster fish. But, you know, if you got a 26-inch dovi, that's definitely a monster fish. You got an 18-inch jaguar, you know, that's typically a monster fish. It's just hard to grow them out to be that big, you know? Definitely hard to get them to be full, to get them to be full grown. Fish fam link. Hey there, fish fam. What's going on, fish fam link? How you doing? Evan TV, do you have an electric eel? No, I do not. That'd be Joey from King of DIY that got that electric eel. Also, um, Ohio Fish Rescue have an electric eel. I would never own an electric fish, period. I've seen the electric catfish at my local fish store. Um, that's not something that I'm willing to buy. I don't want anything electric. You know, um, It makes it that much more dangerous to put your hands in there to maintenance your aquarium. You know, I have venomous fish, and that's already a little bit of a concern when it comes time to doing maintenance and things like that and electric fish that's on a whole nother level so no electric fish for me Kristen oscar um is an oscar a monster fish i wouldn't consider it a monster fish even though they get very very large but i wouldn't consider an oscar a monster fish um they don't have the personalities aggression level to match you know, to be considered monster fish, in my opinion, and they don't really have the size, but they do get big. They do get very large. Be mad, man, someone having a 26-inch fish in their residential home. Yeah, yeah, like I said, D-Mass, I got um the 30-inch 30, 30 arowana, you know. I have the 20-inch arowana. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It happens all the time. You know, people, if anybody has a red tail catfish, guaranteed it's, it's large. Um, there's a lot of fish that, you know, people buy that get extremely big. Uh, I don't think that is crazy when you think about it. Um, I don't think it's crazy. I think having a, a four foot fish in their home uh, is not even crazy, but I feel like I would want to see that setup. Uh, but three foot, that's pretty typical. You know, it's, uh, anybody that's that's taking the hobby to the level that I've taken it to, they have fish that's 30, 36 inches, 30 inches in their home. I mean, I could name off at least 30 right now that does YouTube videos that have, you know, fish that's three foot and bigger in their homes. And again, it's not crazy at all, not in my opinion. 
good. Evan, no, I do not have a red tail catfish. That's another that's another another species of fish that I would never own myself personally. I have my tiger shovel nose, and as you know, you know, they get a little large. But yeah, red tail catfish, they get four foot, four foot plus. I would never try to buy something that's gonna get that big because I would assume that it's gonna get that big and I just wouldn't be able to provide it with the right setup, you know, enclosure for life. There's just absolutely no way that I'll be able to properly house a four foot fish that needs to be in a tank with other four foot fish because it'll eat everything else. Um, yeah, that's 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 something uh that's something that I leave for the other people, you know what I mean? But I enjoy seeing other people keep these massive large red tail catfish, especially when they're doing it correctly. You know, I, it's nothing better than seeing a red tail catfish swimming around its habitat and it's appropriately sized. Um, Kristen, show off your want to please. I can't move away from this laptop. Um, you have to look at another video. Um, you could look at the last video I just posted when I did one another fish room. I show you, I show off my 20 inch albino silver arowana. If you want to see Kobe, who was 30 inches, you got to look at another video. As far as this live stream, I'm sitting in an office on my laptop, and I can't pick my laptop and my laptop up and walk around with it. So you got to look at an older video. We're catching another. We're catching a video in the future. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because. I do plan on showing you guys uh, the, uh, the 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 upgrades and the changes I've done inside of that fish room. I mean, it looks a lot better than what it did look like. So can't wait to show that off to you. Evan, what is fish family link? Yeah, I don't know what you had. I don't know. You 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 actually asking Fish Fam Link? Yeah, you can ask him that. I don't know what what is Fish Family Link either. That's that's the name of his um that's the name of his page. That's the name of his uh his YouTube. Kristen is setting up a saltwater tank hard. No, Kristen, it's not hard. It's actually pretty easy. It's actually pretty easy. Especially if you were okay with starting out with just fish and not corals as well. A Fowler Aquarium is so easy to set up, you know. So um, if you need any help, just take a look at my, one of my um, playlists, um, Introduction to the Saltwater Hobby. I've done it time and time again, starting off with a 20-gallon aquarium. I'll show you exactly, step for step, how to set your very first saltwater aquarium up. It's effortless. It's so easy, you'll wonder why you haven't done it already. Evan, make sure your hands are washed through. And no core line. B mass, I'm still trying to get my fresh plenty clear. I took out that driftwood about six days ago and did did fifty percent water change and it's still super cloudy. How long you think until it's clear? All right, D mass. Um cloudy isn't the same as Cloudy isn't the same as um, tannins. Tannins are brown. They make your water turn brown. Um, it can make it look a little green. You know, but cloudiness is like ammonia spikes, things like that. So quite possibly you might have taken out too much bacteria, too much beneficial bacteria. You know what I mean? So. If you did a 50% water change and that caused your tank to get a little cloudy, just wait it out. Allow your beneficial bacteria to reestablish itself, and then your tank should clear up. If it's still looking a little green, a little brown from the tannins, then go ahead and do a water change. Don't do another 50% water change if a 50% water change causes your tank to go cloudy. When you have a lot of media, if you don't clean, give me an example. If you do a 50% water change, don't clean your filter. If you do a 25% water change, you could also clean your filter. Why? Because you don't want to take out too much beneficial bacteria. You don't want to start the cycle process over. And that's what tends to happen when you do a, such a large water change and then you also change out or you clean that filter. You know what I mean? So allow it to reestablish itself. Let it clear up in a few days. 
and then see where you are with it. And then you could do a water, smaller water change and kind of like go from there. But that's the, you know, I got a tank right now to turn cloudy. I did a massive water change on my, um, my tiger fish, wolf fish tank. But all I'm doing is just waiting it out. I'm allowing it to resettle itself. And I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. But I needed to clean it the way that I did because, you know, I took all, it was so bad, you know, for me, um, scraping off all that algae off the side of the glass. I took out, the, I took out as much water as I needed to take out to remove all that algae. So, yeah, just wait it out. Just wait it out. I think you'll be good. You should definitely be good. As far as the tannins, my I got two tanks in there that's still looking brown. It's still looking brown because of the driftwood that was in there weeks ago. So I'm just taking out doing a little water change at a time, 25, 30%. You know, you could do it once a week. You could do it twice a week. But I wouldn't do it any more than that, and I probably wouldn't do another 50% water change. So I hope that helps you, though. Um, the Zen Ginger Fish Family is a website. A bunch of us volunteer for basically a link tree for aquatic channels. There you go. There you go, Evan. Um, Kristen, what kind of fish can I put in the 200 gallon saltwater tank? Are you trying to go predator or are you trying to go community? KCM, what's good with you, man? How you doing? How you doing? D mass check parameters this morning all normal. Yeah, I'm assuming that they would be normal. You did not change any media or filters. D mass, did you clean your filters? I didn't say you changed it. Did you clean your filters when you did the water change? Uh, Casey, and we are fighting cloudy water right now. I just did a water change that's filling up right now. Yeah. Yeah, we all fight. We all fight cloudy water sometimes, but sometimes you just got to let it balance out. You know, did not clean filters, just turn them off. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it would be cloudy then. I don't know why it would be cloudy then. And you said you did a water change six days ago. No, you said you removed a driftwood six days ago. Did a water change. When was the last time you did a water change, D-Mass? Rob, what's good with you, Rob? How you doing? Man, it's good to see you in the chat. It's good to see you in the chat. Tyler, what's up? What's up? Have I named a shark yet, Tyler? Uh, I don't know. I don't think we did. Nothing that stuck. Nothing that stuck. Ashley, how are you doing? I may have missed it, but any updates on the big plywood bill? New stocking ideas? Ashley, I'm not really doing that aquarium anytime soon. Um, the update on that is that I'm going to tear that corner tank down. I'm going to build it a different way. I'm going to build the saltwater tank out 13 foot all the way to the end. I'm going to, it's going to look like an L instead. So 13 foot saltwater tank all the way to the end. And then I'm going to build a fresh water that goes seven feet from the 225 to the, uh, to the, it's going to be 1300 gallons. For the saltwater tank. So that's the new plans, but not anytime soon. Um Zinch Ginger. And like that above. If fish if, if fish family is in your chat, just means it's, it's recommending you to people on the Discord. And the bot just comes and say hi and make sure everyone hits the like. Like what you saw, make it official, like and subscribe. Okay, well, I didn't know that's what Fish Fam Link was, but yeah, all right, man. Nonetheless, they come through showing that support. I appreciate it. Hey, Cleveland, what do you think about breeding fancy goldfish? I don't really know nothing about breeding fancy goldfish, Rob, but I, what I will do is probably add some Shubunkin goldfish to the koi pot. I was thinking about that, adding some Shubunkin. D mass water change was Saturday afternoon. Looks like I didn't even do one though. Um, are you over filtering your aquarium? Are you over filtering your aquarium? And when you say cloudy, are we talking about like it's looking like gray cloudy? Or are you talking about it's looking like dark from the tannins? 
Um, and if you did a water change on Saturday, it's been a few days. Maybe you could do another water change tomorrow. Maybe you could do a water change tomorrow. Might want to clean the filters and um, do maybe a 20%. Casey, and we just got our first fry from our Lemon Blue iPlecos. And by the way, I don't know if you knew this. It's Cody. We changed the name and started YouTube channel. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that's you, Cody. <laughs> yeah, I know that's you, Cody. I can tell from the picture. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel. Yeah, let me see. Let's see how easy it is to find you. Damn good name. Damn good name. It's so easy to find you. You know how some people, they uh, they make a name and then it's extremely difficult to find them? All right, I'm about to, uh, I'm about to subscribe to you from both my, both my channels. All right, all right. I'm going to switch the account real quick. Also, um, D-Mass, you might want to add some plants if you can. Add some plants. Oh, you say you say it is a planter tank. Damn. The plants should really help you remove out some of that, uh, some of that cloudiness. Hold on. KCM Aquatics. There we go. All right. All right, man. I'm a hey, hey, Cody. I'm number two and three, man. I got you, man. I got you. I got you. Be mass. Uh, I have two hang on the back, two two hang on the back water filters filled to the top with media, twenty nine gallon tank, both seeking filters ready for thirty gallons. Before I put that last piece of driftwood in there, it was crystal clear. Yeah, it's still driftwood. It was the driftwood. Um. Plant tank with floating plants, plant of food wall, plant tanks, food wall spectrum for substrate four inch bed. Yeah, man. Yeah, sounds like it was your um. It does. Yeah, sounds like it was that driftwood. You just got to keep doing water changes. Just keep doing water changes. It's been a few days. Take out another twenty percent today, or you know, take out thirty percent. Um, this Saturday, take out another thirty percent. That's all you can do. Just keep on, you know, one, the more water you take out, since that driftwood is gone, the more water you take out over time, it's going to clear up 100%. 100%. Kristen. Yeah, Kristen, you never you never um, answered that question. I don't know if you were trying to go with predators or community. Okay, and, uh, Cody, it's all good. Robert, I've got one for you, Cleveland. Dondre Pike sickly got my eyes on one. I have to have it. Devin, yo, what's good with you? What's good with you? Sorry I missed that comment. Uh, how do you feel about all in ones, Cleve? I don't think I've heard you speak on them much. The all in ones? Devin, what's the all in ones? I'm about to look up that uh that that pike. Man, you be coming through though. Dondra Pike? Yeah, you might have to oh pike sick. No, nothing's popping up. Nothing's popping up. Let me try this again. Female popping up, believe it, or, believe it or not. Let's see. Hold on. There we go. Um, are we talking about the tiger pike? Yeah. You, yeah. We're going to have to. Uh, 
Are you sure you you sure that's the name of it? Look. We talking about talking about that? Cuz when I just put in the Dondra Pike cycle, where are we at? That's what pop up. So I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if I'm typing it in wrong or whatever. Casey and we added a giant piece of lily to our pond. Okay, okay. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, as you know, I added some pine, some pine plants. I'm about to add some lilies, um, lotus. I'm about to add a lot more. I'm also going to get a get a filter with the UV light on that thing so I could get my pond back clear because it's been looking kind of kind of green again. Just keep getting green on me. Every time, like I said, when it rained, it got green. And it's still green. All right. Right on, Rob. Thank you for uh, subscribing to Cody's Cody's uh, channel. Man, that's the support that we need. Evan, how do you feel about... Man. How do you feel about all of us? I already answered that. Zen Ginger. I took a piece of driftwood from my 130 gallon after months of trying to clear a bacteria boom and it was gone in a week. But I was told too many water changes can make it worse and let it pass. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, I say it all the time, uh, the Zen Ginger. Sometimes it's best just to leave your aquarium alone. Um, in, in D Mass's case, He's having an issue with uh, he's having an issue with the tannins, so the tannins is going to cause your water to turn brown. So the only way to eliminate that would be from doing water changes. It doesn't matter; you can't wait that out. You got to do the water changes to get that out of there. Um, you just can't do it too too often. Otherwise, you could crash your aquarium. You got to allow your beneficial bacteria to reestablish itself before you do a water change when you're only doing about a 20 percent or something like that you could kind of like you can you'll be motivated but from seeing it clear up a little bit at a time if he did one massive water change on it once a week it might take a month month and a half to get it to get it to clear up you know if you do like an 80 percent water change once a week on that aquarium um it'll clear up you know within you know three Water change, three, four water changes, so within a month, but it takes time. That's the problem with that driftwood. You know, it's, you know, it really ha it really does a number on your aquariums until it don't. You know, I got a 240 gallon that got tons of driftwood in there. And because it's been sitting in the water for, for years um, in the aquarium, you know what I mean? It doesn't really change, it doesn't really make the aquarium turn brown. It's no tannins in that tank. But if I put it in a different tank, Start the cycle over. Uh, Henry, Henry, what's up? What's up? How you doing? And hey, as well, easy and fast solution. Throw some so you can clarity in your in your filters. Just throw in the filter false situation. Then thank me later. All right. Well, well, D Mass Henry uh, gave you some advice. I don't, I don't, I don't really fool with the. Uh, the sea chem products, not like that. But also, I don't really just throw things in the tank to try to clear it up. Uh, I rather, I rather do it another way. But if that works, cool. And uh, so Devin said the tanks with the filtration in the back. So those all in one tank. I'm not a fan of those. I'm not a fan of those. I like to have just the tank and decide on whichever filtration I want to use. You know what I mean? As you see, I do a lot of DIY filtrations. You know what I mean? So I prefer to do it like that. Whether I want to decide whether or not I want to hang on the back filter, if I want a sump, if I want a refugium, if I want a canister filter, if I want any of that, I want to be the one to decide that. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like how I feel about that, Devin. I definitely, I'm definitely not a fan of the all-in-ones. Aqua imports, danger pipe, black and red. I think you're talking about Rob. I'm about to pull. I'm about to pull up the one that I think you're talking about. I couldn't find it up under that name at all, but I do believe that's. I think that's like a Zenju, a Zenju pipe. Let me see. 
I think you're talking about this one. This is Zenju. Are we talking? About, are we talking about this one right here? Look. Are we talking about that one? That's a Zenju pipe. You talking about that one, Rod? Yeah. And it's and it's yeah, that's what so you talking about the Zenju and it's it's um Dandara. See the name right there? Yeah, Dandara. So yeah, that's why I was having a hard time finding it. But yeah, 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 I like I like I like the Zenju. Yeah, I like the Zenju pipe. No, 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 it's all good, Rob. It's all good. I'm glad we were able to find which one you're talking about. I do like the Zenju pipe. Man, and then yeah. Yeah, they got them for cheap. They got them for cheap. Aquatic. Have you ever ordered from Aquatic Imports? I mean, I see them. They always they're always rec being recommended to me, but I wasn't sure if I would. You know, I don't know if I would trust it. You know, I don't. So it's hard to trust a lot of these sellers. You know what I mean? So are you familiar with ordering from them? And the small three incher, the three incher is only like forty. You know, forty nine bucks. That's a really good deal. What's the medium size? Five. Oh yeah, yeah. You about to have me order one too? <laughs> you gonna have me order one too, right, man? Yeah, I like those. Yeah, let's see. If you want to leach out tannins, get a big enough bucket to put the wood in and fill it with water and forget about it for a few months. Yeah, Cody, that's sometimes work. That sometimes work, but it still will keep releasing tannins. You can't just forget about it. You got to constantly keep brushing that. But uh, sometimes you just got to be patient. You know what I mean? Sometimes the driftwood is just too big to go in a bucket. You know, I've I've heated up driftwood when it was smaller pieces to clear it of its tannins real fast. Uh, sometimes I just let it, you know, do it naturally inside the aquarium as I'm doing water changes to clear up, and over time it gets clear. There's a lot of different methods to get those tannins to be leached out of your driftwood. You just got to have some patience and uh, and desire to actually have it in your aquarium. I'm gonna put. Rob said, I'm going to put it with my Zebrina. Solid place to order from. Also use exotic fish shop and, of course, predatory fans. Okay, Rob, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And that's what I needed to hear. I'm going to put aquatic imports on, a, on my bucket list of uh, stores to order from. The only two places I've ever ordered from was predatory fans now and Imperial Tropicals. But... Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I like this. Gen Hold on, is that the Zenzu? Zenzu one or two? Hold up. Okay, Rob. So look, I just found this out right here. So the one that we like, Rob. The one that we like, Rob, is the Zenzu three. Don't order it if it's not the Zen. Let me see. How could I get this? Uh, there we go. Look, Rob, it's Zenju 3. So the one that they have online right here is a Zenju 1. Uh, come on. Come on. There we go. It's a Zenju 1. So you got to make sure it's a Zenju 3. Let's see where we could get. Oh, still right there. So make sure, make sure it's that one. Make sure it's that one. You see how the price went up though, Rob, on that one? But look, so it's from 70 to 370. But yeah, so just make sure it's that Zenju 3. Yeah. And it's still a very, uh, how much is the medium? Look at that medium. The medium is $229, whereas the other one was $54.
Let's see what the small is looking like. One and a half inch or two and a half inch, 70 bucks. And it say notify me. Yeah. So just make sure you're getting that right one. Mm hmm. Ray Quan, what's up? What's up? Grimos, Mini, Dolby Monster. Okay. I've not, I don't have any experience with the with the Grimode. Hey, saying uh, Cody, you ever think about doing a Rainbow Daughter tank? Let me know where you can catch you some. We're about to order a trap and get set. Uh, let me see what those are. The Rainbow Daughter. I'm not familiar with those. But what I am gonna do though, Cody, is um. I'm going to set. Oh, those are nice. Damn. Oh, those are nice. What the hell? Yeah, yeah those are nice, y'all. Yo. You can't even tell the colors. Rainbow Daughter, nonetheless. But yeah, um, what I am going to do, though, Cody, Cody is I'm going to set a pond up outside and do a native... Uh, and do a native fish pond. So to, so, to, so to prevent the raccoons from being able to get in there and do anything, I'm just going to build an enclosure around it. Like if, it's going to be right outside of the um, the other all-white fish room, and I'll just build something around it so it can't get in there, whether it's, you know, some walls and all that. You know, it's going to look like an attachment of the house, but, you know, I think that would be the best thing. You know, make sure it's completely enclosed so I don't have to worry about any raccoons getting in there. So. That's going to be the plan. Definitely can't wait to have some have some bass out there, some tiger bass or something like that. Smallmouth bass. Let me see. You say you got a tricolor eel rod. And I like what I, I like what I like end of the day try getting a baby and got it had it in a breeder net box thing and what he got out and the tank balls Sabrina calling bed took him out damn Rob yeah that's a struggle me and you both you know everybody can understand and relate to the ups and downs of the hobby if they try to make it seem like they haven't they're lying you know that's all part of it what was I looking at? What was I looking at? I don't know what I was about to look at. Oh, yeah, the tricolor eel. What does a tricolor eel look like? Freshwater? Man. Well, Yeah, I can't get anything up. I can't even, I can't pull anything up on the um, tricolor eel rod. Nothing's popping up. But Dina, good afternoon to you. Well, here, good evening. Cody, you used to, you need to get some dog less traps, cat food, golf balls, put some food in the trap, put some around it. Put ball on the top. We would catch all the raccoons around. Yeah, I, I bought a trap. I bought a trap from uh, from Harbor Freight. So, um, yeah, we're going to catch that raccoon. We're going to catch that raccoon and get him up out of here. I just hope that it's only one. But, yeah, yeah, that's, man, it's out of here, man. It's out of here. But you remember the one I told you for predatory fit? Yeah, yep, I do remember now, Rob. Okay. Yeah. RB gym. I used to have some monsters. My Jaguars and Texas were my favorites. Great content on here, by the way. Thank you very much, Heartbeats. I appreciate it. Fish Tank Frank, what's good with you, bro? How you doing? How you doing? Cody, if you have if you have one, you probably have a family around. 
Damn, Cody. Damn, man, you over here jinxing it? You know, we had two. It was two. You know, they dwindled down to the one. So hopefully that's it. David, what's up? What's up? And if it is more than one, that one is only, it's always uh, walking by itself. But you're probably right. Nonetheless, trap is about to get put together. And I'm going to start trapping. I'm going to keep trapping until I, don't, until I don't get anything else and I don't see anything on camera. Right? They got they out of here. Probably a male. Man, you know, look, look I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. <laughs> this mother looked fat. It looked like it was a, man, it looked like a pregnant female. David, what's good? What's good? Brain says I'm doing good on my way to another cornhole tournament to get that fish money. I hear you. That's what's up. Yeah, Frank. But let me show you, though, Cody. Let me show you this big ass raccoon from the other day. Let's see. Yeah, where are you at? There you go. So let me make sure. <laughs> yep. This was on Thursday. Watch when you see how fat this damn raccoon was. You see how fat that raccoon is? It's a fat ass damn raccoon. Yep. Definitely one of the fattest ones. Looked like I said, it looked like a fucking pregnant female. And if that's the case, that's a problem. Yep. Yep. Man, I'm I'm telling you, I'm out. <laughs> So over that, so over this raccoon, these raccoons. But yeah, um, yeah, as I was thinking, could is that's definitely a time of year. It could be a pregnant female. And uh as far as a hat, <laughs> that thing is gonna make man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My cast chase one other day. It ran into the sewer. Damn, David. I don't have no cats, but I, I feel like you got some. You got some sick cats for sure. Them cats are savages. A raccoon, a tear a cat up. Yeah, if I had a big dog, but then again, you know, you know, some of me have a rabies, and I'm just gonna just gonna do what I gotta do. Just gonna get him up out of here. Right, find somebody like raccoon meat. I just found out that um, that animal animal control, like they they'll come out and they'll pick it up. I heard that it's some. I either told me that it's free. I guess once I trap it, so I'm gonna trap it. But if they don't pick it up, then I'm about to gas him. I'm gonna gas it for sure. I'm not I'm not playing with these raccoons anymore. My pond has to always stay covered. You know what I'm saying? I hate when I see them just. Walking across the yard like they own the place. Yeah. But it is what it is, though. It's not going to be here much longer. That's for sure. Man. My Terry is afraid of possums. She's sick. In her, in her furry little boots. She saw a raccoon. Yeah, Zen. Yeah, Zen, Ginger. Um, yeah, we don't, I'm, I'm so glad we don't have any possums. I haven't seen no possums. But yeah, the raccoons are no joke. My dog would be scared of the raccoon, too. They haven't crossed paths. They haven't crossed paths. I guess, I mean, that's a good thing. That's a blessing, because I don't know how that would turn out. I don't know how that would turn out. But I feel like that if they did happen... If that if it came after my dog, it'd be it'd be out of there that day. I'll go and stomp a mud hole in it. Um, 
know, do we, you say you have foxes in the UK? Yeah, we got uh, they got foxes, coyotes. Um, I haven't seen any foxes or coyotes in this area, but you know, driving around in certain areas, you know, uh, there's coyotes. More coyotes than foxes. The last time I seen a fox is when I was living in um, San Jose, and um, I was doing some work on uh, on the fairgrounds, and I seen a, and I was you know I seen a fox or whatever. But coyotes, we get those. Luckily, with like I said, not in, not so much in our neighborhood, not in the inner city, but you know, outside of the city, yeah, there's coyotes. Yeah, I'm not really concerned about the coyotes, though. I guess maybe I, should, I probably would be, you know, if we had them, if those were a problem. But, but yeah, right now it's just the raccoons. It's like top, top, uh, uh, top predator that I have to deal with. Island Aquatics, what's good with you, man? How you doing? Medina Sickless, I have a German Shepherd that killed a raccoon. I just found pieces of it in the yard. Damn, Medina? Yeah, that German Shepherd's a beast. Did you have, did you take him to get checked after that? Were you concerned about anything that it could have gotten from the raccoon? RBG, we have foxes in the inner cities in the UK. Shit. Man. Are they so when it comes to the foxes, what do you what, what what's your concern? Like what what do they terrorize or what you know do you have to worry about? You know, we gotta worry when you got raccoons, you gotta worry about, you know, if you got fish, you gotta worry about your little animals or probably your cats and your dogs, huh? Maybe not dogs. Yeah, what's the concern with the raccoon with the um, with the foxes? Damn. And Island Aquatics, my mantis shrimp is straight. He's good. He's good. You'll get an update on that fish room soon. I definitely want to do an upgrade on that on that um, fish room. Probably, <sighs> I'll probably do it tomorrow. Probably drop it early tomorrow. I haven't recorded it yet, but I'll probably get that video out tomorrow. I'll show you an update on that room in there. The pond is absolutely amazing. What I did do, surprise, motherfucking surprise, y'all. What I did do is order a new pond. Another kiddie pool pond, a 13-foot one. I know I was going to build a 3,000-gallon and all that, but you know what? Man, um, I got to do what makes the most sense. And right now, that don't make – spending that kind of money right now don't make sense. So that being said, I still need to do what's best for my animals. So right now they're in an 800-gallon. They're going to go into an 1,800-gallon, right? They're getting 1,000 gallons more. They're not going to stress about whether or not this thing is another pool compared to, you know, the 3,000 gallon that I was going to build. And mind you, the 3,000 gallon was only going to be 10 foot, 10 foot by the eight foot. Right. And then I was going to go. I was going to go up higher. So um, the new 1800, the new 1800 gallon is going to go 13 foot, seven foot. And 39.5 inches, almost 40 inches tall. So um, right now, that one is only 6.5 inches in height. Get a nice fucking upgrade. Nice fucking upgrade. And um, that at least buy me some time. You know, fun the hell I need to do. Um, then I could go ahead and do the saltwater tank first. You know what I'm saying? So I could, when I take down that corner tank, I could go ahead and start building on the salt water for them first, you know, and that's, 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 that's how I'm going to do it. But yeah, so that's going to be exciting. That's going to be exciting. So y'all are hearing it first. I haven't mentioned that on any other, um, on any other platform, haven't put that out in a video. So y'all heard it first, all 26 of y'all. So make sure y'all hit that like button and subscribe button if you haven't already. But, um, but yeah, so same, so same deal, just on another, just on a bigger level. Um, that's going to, I'm really excited for the plants. You know, I'll be having a little bit of an issue with my, um, elephant ear because it keeps hitting the canopy top. So when I extend it out from under that top, I'm putting the elephant right there. So now it's going to really get some height. You know, it might reach eight foot tall. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to put the grow lights on the ceiling. So all it can do is just grow up real tall. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited to finally get those guys into something bigger. 
then I could add into there um, my arowana, my other arowana, you know what I mean? Potentially maybe the Giardini. So it's going to be sick to see them, you know, having 13 foot of swim space. You know what I mean? That's, that's fucking long. That's fucking long. So, um, yeah. And they don't really care about the height like that. You know, and, and almost 40 inches is good enough. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, when they build their aquariums, they're only going three foot, three foot tall. Might go four foot, might go four foot. So at almost 40 inches tall, that's all I need for now. 1,800 gallons. But yeah, so that's the, so like I said, y'all got the, y'all got the, uh, the 411 on that. Um, Island Aquatics, appreciate that, man. Thank you. Just Jessica, how is the 20 gallon saltwater doing? The 20 gallon saltwater you're doing is pretty, it's doing pretty good. It's the same. Um, it's, you know, um, it's a good thing that it's still doing the same. You know what I mean? It, is, it hasn't declined. It's actually going doing better. Um, my GSP is starting to spread on the rocks. I'm happy about that. If you don't know what the GSP is, it's a green star pilot. So I'm really happy to see that actually like spreading on a rock. Um, that urchin, that urchin is uh, doing a, an amazing job with the with the with the hair algae. It keeps knocking off my damn corals. I guess that's something that I didn't know would happen. And the reason why is because while it's eating off the hair algae, it's just knocking into the corals and knocking them on the ground. So the corals are still doing good, but they're not gonna. It's knocking them on the ground. So I got two extra corals on the ground that wasn't already there. But again, they're still doing good. Um, hair algae is still not maintained yet. But overall, like I said, corals are doing amazing. You know, cleanup crew is doing good. You know what I mean? I haven't had the chance to clean it. You know, I've been busy with work this week. Over the weekend, I spent 18 hours, nine hours in that fish room, nine hours in that fish room. So over the course of the next couple of days, maybe not the next couple of days, um, depending on if I have work, but by Sunday, I will have all of my saltwater aquariums clean. I'm going to have the 125 done. I'm going to have the 225 done. I'm going to have the 20 gallon done and I'm going to have the 75 gallon done. So that's, that's what's next on the list as well as, um, stone toes, you know, Stoney's aquarium. Then after that, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Everything is going to be clean at that point. So. I'm excited to finally get that under control, and then I'm going to come up with a cleaning schedule so this doesn't happen. But, you know, that's where I'm at with it. Cody, can you get a sturgeon in California? Yeah, Cody, I had two sturgeon. Tripping, right? I had two sturgeon. Um, but I, now I will never buy a sturgeon again. You, you know how big they get, right? You know how big they get, Cody? Let me tell you how big sturgeon get. Mind you, I went to Monterey Bay Aquarium and I seen sturgeon. They were like eight feet. Let's see. Sturgeon fish size. 16 feet, Cody. 16 feet. <laughs> never buying no sturgeon, man. I'm never buying a sturgeon again. Man. Hell no. Nah. Nope. Weighing up to 800 pounds? Nope. Not doing it, Cody. Nope. Medina, yes, sir. We took him into the vet. He was good. Had one cut on his right front leg, a few stitches. All right, Medina, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. I'm double happy to hear that. The fact that, you know, nothing was wrong with him, and he took one out. He only had one, one scar. Soldier for real. RB's Jen, can I ask what's the common fish that you really enjoy? I really like the convict cichlids. I have a lot of characters, small, feisty, and play around. Uh, the common fish that I really enjoy. Um, obviously, it would be cichlids. Uh I can't really pick one. I can't really pick one. Um, Dovi is my favorite fish, but you can't have more than one Dovi together, and they don't really play nice together. If I was to say at this point, which one do I appreciate the most? 
in the African cichlid so much more now than ever before because of the generation, um, the size of them, and their personality when it comes to food. I mean, they're like little piranhas. Like, I don't care what my day is like. I don't care if I got a long day ahead of me or I had a long day. It's nothing like going in there and dropping some flakes in there to those African cichlids. I mean, it's like, you know, they, they're so happy to see you come in the room, first of all. They're already just like, like, oh my God, you're home, you're home, you're home. You know, like, like, like your dog, you know what I'm saying? When like your dog, when you come home, it's just so happy jumping all over you. And that's how it is when you're, when, when you're African cichlids see you. And you just sprinkle the flakes in there and they just attack it like it's, you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm the African cichlids. You know, uh, peacock cichlids, peacock cichlids specifically. So yeah, I think I would have to go with that. I would have to go with that. It's it's so entertaining. It's so it's so rewarding. You know, if y'all don't have any African cichlids, man, get you some. Get you some African cichlids. Get you some peacock cichlids. You know, you won't regret that. You won't regret it. The color, the personality, um, the size tank that you could you that you could and have, keep them in. You don't need something extremely massive. You know what I mean? And if you do go massive, it just takes it from here to here. You know what I mean? So I would highly recommend that everybody get them some African cichlids in their life. Seriously. And I and I and I wasn't even an African cichlid pusher. You know what I mean? I never used to push African cichlids on people. I was always like, get you a dove eye, get you a dove eye. Dove eyes are cool, but you need a massive aquarium. And on top of that, you know, you may might he might cause some heartache. He might cause some heartache. You know, they're extremely aggressive and they don't play. But yeah. Royal Constrictor, what's up? What's up? How you doing? How you doing? Kathy, you, did you already have a fire eel? I did have a fire eel. Um, it was one picky ass eel. Um, he didn't eat. He didn't eat the whole time. He didn't eat, you know, and he starved. Um, Alejandro Souza, what's good with you, man? How you doing, man? I appreciate you for stopping through. Yeah, the Zen Ginger heartbeat. If you like personality, I think a car or Gia Vegas are the way to go. If you're into cichlids, they're so personable, like little water puppies, but can still be community fish. All right. Casey Cody, yeah, but bro, you would be 200 years old before they get 800 pounds and 16 foot slow girls takes a while for them to get to get giant. Yeah, yeah, Cody. <laughs> yeah, Cody, I'm not taking that chance though. But you're right. You're right. I do my the guy at my local fish store, he has a um sturgeon inside of his extremely large pool that he turned into a pine, and it's still only like, you know, four foot. Five foot. But that's that's big, though. That's big. You know what I mean? So it's just one of those fish that I just, you know, I like to keep fish for life. You know what I mean? So what am I going to do with it? You know, who, who's going to inherit that fish, that problem? You know what I mean? So um, I think for the cold water fish, Cody, I think I'll be straight with, with some bass, the bluegill, sunfish. You know what I mean? Have you ever seen Watch Dear Me for Dinner? He had some really old, well, his really old videos when he was still um, in his house prior to the one he got right now. He has the most beautiful pond that I've ever seen. Most beautiful pond. He don't have it no more, but he had it. It was a pool pond. He had um, all of his plants stacked up on rocks and water hyacinth. Water crystal clear, so many different fish in there, and he would go swimming in there. It's the most beautiful pool pond I've ever seen in my life. I'll, matter of fact, I'll do a reaction video to that because it'll take me some time to really go and look for it. But Colin, what's up? What's up, Colin? What's up? How you doing? But yeah, um, the most beautiful pond, most fucking beautiful, and so I like that. You know, I like the ecosystem that it was. You know what I mean? Like, he had smaller fish that would get eaten by the big fish. You know, he barely had to feed the fish. You know, the smaller fish are eating, like, um, you know, fly larvae and things like that. So it's like, 
a true ecosystem. You know what I mean? So I like that. That's good, Kyle. I'm glad to hear that. Kendall, what's going on with you? How you doing? And yeah, the family is doing great. I hope you're doing well. David, any tips on dealing with brown algae? Um, do you have do you have plants or if we're talking about salt water, do you have corals in there? Or is it just fish only? Suzanne, TFC, are you pretty much all bigger fish or do you have anything nano or at least would you consider a small species? So Zen Ginger, um, I have guppies. I have guppies that's reproducing and breeding inside of, um, I think it's like a 46 gallon bow front. I have betta fish. I have a community betta fish aquarium where I have T-bone tetras, rummy nose tetras. You know what I mean? So um, I have smaller fish. I do have smaller fish. Fish only. All right, all right. So if you have fish only, David, just cut the lights off. So cut the lights off for a while. I mean, when I say cut them off, I'm talking about don't cut the lights on at all. You know what I mean? Feed them in the dark. You know what I'm saying? Um, just cut the lights off. You'll be all right. And it's fresh water. Also, you could do a larger water change. You know what I mean? Get in there, manually remove some of that brown algae. Um, do a good water change on it. You know, maybe... 50, 60 percent, and then keep the lights off. Guarantee keeping that light off will will help you know with that brown algae. So algae comes from um, the nutrients and then the light source. You know what I'm saying? So if you reduce the amount of feedings, if you're doing the water changes, keep that light off. You won't get that algae under control. Mm-hmm. Just finished scraping the damn tank. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, cut the lights off. Put it to you like this. I had cyanobacteria in one of my aquariums. It doesn't matter which one. And I was doing everything to constantly get in there and clean it. Comes back, clean it, comes back, clean it, comes back. I cut the lights off and all of it died away. Not immediately, not immediately, but you're gonna you're gonna see over the days. As is, you know, decreasing, but this was salt water, so it's a little bit. So you got to spend a lot more to do water changes on salt water. For the fresh water, I would just do more water changes, you know, because when you do the water change, you're taking out all of those nutrients, you're taking out the phosphates, you're taking out the nitrates and things like that. So adding plants also will help you with those with those nitrates, with the algae and all that. The plants will outcompete the algae for the nutrients. You know what I'm saying? Because a plant, because algae is a plant. So the plant needs food and a light source. What is algae needs a plant plant? Algae needs a food and a light source. A plant needs food and a light source. So if you add a plant in there, pothos, go and buy a pothos plant. Make sure you take it out the take it out the pot, rinse off all that dirt, plop that in the back of your, your aquarium. Already you got all those established roots that's gonna be on that plant already. That's going to start and then put a little light on top of that or put it next to the window. I mean, I don't know where your tank is, but you need to make sure that it's getting some some light that it needs to help it grow. And guaranteed, it's also going to help you with that algae. But, um, yeah, so water changes, cut the light down, add some plants, uh, reduce the amount of feeding. All of those will allow you to, you know, have a better control of that algae. I don't really get algae like that in my freshwater aquariums. It's usually the salt water. Um, but yeah, hope that helps. Colin, what size tank would you recommend for it better to thrive? Good question, Colin. For it better to thrive, I would say 20 gallons or more. I've noticed that my my um uh, my my better fish, DJ Mustard, that's in that community tank, that 20 gallon, it loves all of that space. Now I do have betters in a five and a half gallon, but I noticed that in that nice community tank. It loves that. You know what I mean? So not only will it thrive in that 20 gallon, but you could add some tank mates with them. Don't add no loaches with no better. Don't add no fucking loaches, man. You could get maybe you could use like Cory cats. Um, maybe Cory cats or you could get some Chinese algae eaters, albino, whatever the case may be. But don't put loaches. 
they're going to shred the fins of that better. The truth, can adult Oscar be kept with a four-year-old map turtle? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. But every every turtle has a different personality. But I think that you could definitely 100% try that. I have a map turtle that's about, I've had for four years. And it lived fine with every fish that I put in there with it. You know, it never went after the fish. You know, they're not as aggressive as the red ear sliders. The red ear sliders are very aggressive. going to pick at the fins. It's going to pick at the eyes of your fish. You know what I mean? So, you know, with 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 observation, I would definitely try putting that Oscar, you know, with Map Turtle. Stephen Bates, when will you get a red tail cat? When hell freezes over, Stephen. When hell freezes over, I'm never getting a red. I'm never getting a red tail catfish. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, Cody. <laughs> Cody on point. I'm never getting one. Hey, 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 Stephen, um, he was on point. He was on point. I'm never getting one. But Colin, what's your favorite saltwater fish? Or Colin, what's my favorite saltwater fish? My favorite saltwater fish is the eel, man. It's the fucking eel. That 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 uh, that Japanese moray eel, man. I, I'm going to show it. I love showing this eel off. It's my... um. It's on my wish list. I'm too old to be having a fucking wish list, right? But this this uh this eel is not it's not easy on the pockets. Um so that's why I'm not a. it's gonna be a while before that ever get bought. But let me just show y'all my favorite eel since since I was asked. Let me show you this. I guess it don't even matter which picture I go to. This motherfucker look good in every picture. Let me see. Where can I do? Uh, there we go. Japanese dragon moray eel. That is the fish I would love to have. But, you know, they cost $1,500. And in some places, they cost $1,800. I guess that's not a lot of money to some people. But when you when you got to have a whole family and you got all these damn bills, you can't sit there and just go spend fifteen or eighteen hundred dollars on a fish. One day, though, one day I will finally have that Japanese moray eel. I'm gonna be happy as hell. David, you actually what plan? Get a potos. Get a potos, David. All right. <laughs> Cody said, okay, but remember who told you first. <laughs> man. Get money, Dre. What's good with you, man? How you doing? How big does that tiger fish get looking to get one? All right, get money, Dre. Honestly, I'm I'm not even 100 percent certain. Let me let me look real quick. So it's called the Vitatis. There's a couple of them, right? There's a Goliath and there's a Vitatis. So uh, one is a hydro sinus vititis, which is that one. That one is that one gets bigger, right? And then the one that I have, let's see. Well, in a while, they could get three feet. They could get three feet in a while. Let's see if this is a vititis. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> oh man, what did I get myself into? Man, let me make sure it's the one with the red tail. That might be the no, that's the other one. That's the other one, y'all. So look. Remember I was saying that one. Look at the fucking teeth on this thing, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. Look at that. Damn. So luckily, that's not the one that I got. I'm going to show you the one that I got right here. Let me show you the one that I got. It still look crazy, though. Still look crazy. There we go. So this one looks a lot better. This looks way better. But yeah. 
still look crazy. And then if you uh see look, yeah, look, look, a little bit bit, a little bit smaller, right? A little bit smaller. But still crazy. Look at them teeth. That's why I had to get it. But so it still get big. So so at least assume that it will get two foot or bigger. At least, you know, be prepared for that. All right, Stephen, I'm going to buy my, I'm going to hug my red tail catfish. Catfish prettier, your imaginary one. That's all good, the truth. It's all good. Okay, so, uh, Kendall, oh, hell no. Nah. Kendall, you saying all oh, hell and nah, all about that fish? <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that what you were saying, hell and nah, all about, Kendall? <laughs> <laughs> get money, Dre. It's all good. Oh, you said you're not gonna get that. Get money, Dre. <laughs> Dre, come on, man. We can do this together, man. We can do this together, man. We gotta get you one. Gotta get you one. It might not get that big, though. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those teeth. Those teeth are crazy. Those teeth are crazy. But yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. yeah, every every oh, there you go, damn, damn, yeah, there's them teeth again. <laughs> yeah, look like shark teeth. I hope it don't tear my ass up, but you know what? Everybody that I see keep these online. Um, they're not like overly aggressive. Believe it or not, they're not trying to go and attack the owner or nothing like that. Now it will bite another fish in half. That's a fact, but um, I haven't seen one try to attack its um, owner at all. So that's a good thing. <laughs> I hope the luck keeps rolling. <laughs> but yeah, um, can you, I mean, I guess you could believe these things hunt and eat piranhas in the wild. That's that's one that's that's one of their staple diet. They eat piranha. That's that lets you know how badass these are. But it's just such a beautiful fish, though. Such a beautiful fish. You know, red's my favorite color, so, you know, seeing one of those, yeah, yeah. One day, one day you see it full grown on the channel. Detroit RB was good with you, was good with you. How you doing? Kendall, it might try, it actually might think my hand is a snack. That's why I got to always make sure it eats first, you know. Um, yeah, those teeth right there could bite through a glove. Those teeth could bite through a glove. I'll make sure I'm being careful, but I cannot wait to see it full grown like that with those teeth. I'm willing. I'm, you know, it's almost like a dog. You know, people have these these uh, these cane corsos. You know what I mean? They teeth teeth are big. You know, they're a very aggressive dog. You know, so it's kind of like that. I don't have a cane corso, but I definitely have a a fish that could potentially inflict some serious damage to a hand. So I just got to be careful. It knows you're the biggest fish. That's right, Connor, for sure. Oh, you have a Doberman, Kendall? Okay, yeah. Dobermans are so smart. Yeah, and they're, and they, and they're um, protective. Very smart, protective dog. Yeah. I would love to get a Doberman one day, but... Um, Maybe not here. Maybe not here. I feel like they need a lot of room. Do yours have like a lot of yards to run around in, or you know, I know, or is, or is it taking you on walks multiple times a day? And Detroit, that's good to hear. And as far as me, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm happy. Really good day. Short day from work. Uh, I was able to sit in the front yard. Finally, I was able to maintain a yard over the weekend so i was able to sit down and you know just enjoy it enjoy the pond watch my kid ride around on his bike you know so it's been a minute since i've been able to do that so it's a real good day it was, it's been a real good day <laughs> drake said i'm good on a tiger fish 
<laughs> you got two red belly, red tail pakus I gotta get rid of, and I didn't do my research way and now I'm stuck. Yeah, Trey. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I don't know where you located at, but you might be able to call up um Ohio Fish Rescue. If you're not making content, it might you either might be in the video or you could use that, you know, on your social media platform. Have them come and grab those Paku. They love picking up Paku. Yeah. Your, uh, the, your, or your local fish store won't pick them up? I mean, won't take them? Man, tell them that you paid them to take those. Yeah, the Paku is one of the worst fish that gets sold because, you know, they always look so cool. They look like silver dollars, and they also look like uh, red, uh, um, um, red belly piranha. Then all of a sudden, they turn into these gigantic fish and um they're they're quite they're quite a uh, quite annoying they're quite annoying ohio fish rescue they have like a four thousand or five thousand gallon uh, plywood bill and their paku used to chew through the cords of the power head to the filter all that just chew through the cords like can you imagine how insane that is that a fish chew through the cord risking getting electrocuted all of that Crazy. Into the future, I got a pair of a cars on their third spawn, thinking of saving some this time, but don't know the best way to share swap meat. To share swap meat, um, probably into the future. That might that might be the best way. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been stuck with my um with my spawns for 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 shit. A year and some change. A year and some change. But the only thing is I haven't really been trying to actively get rid of them. You might be able to link up with one of your local fish stores. You know what I'm saying? Since they're purebred, you might find a local fish store that's willing to take them for store credit. Um, that's the best way. When you have hybrids, it's harder to get them to take them because they're not as valuable as a purebred fish. But you might have action with you know, tell them, hey, I got some cars. What would you give me, you know, for our store credit? You know, it might only be like $3 a fish, but that goes towards another fish. So you might be good. I'm honestly not going to get another dog because of allergies, but I definitely get a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Yeah, I've been wanting, um, I've been wanting, actively wanting, like a uh, like a Merle Bully or Merle Frenchie, but you know, obviously, because I want to breed them and get some of that, you know, give me some of that money. But at the same time, I'm not really a dog person like that. I'm not really a dog person like that, and that takes a lot of a commitment. And right now, with all the things on my on my plate, I don't really have time to be trying to breed dogs. But yeah. All right, be personal. You love pit bulls. Yeah, I, I love pit bulls. Can I have three acres, but I take him to an abandoned mine near my house and let him run off the leash? Damn. Three acres. I candles. That's amazing. I, man, I'm <laughs> that's amazing. If I had three acres of land, I would I'd be out there building so much on that land. I'd build a fish house, I'd build a reptile house. I build um, just another house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do you, like, I don't want to be all in your business, but, like, what state do you live in? Three acres, that's that's like a goal. That's a, a that's like the goal of a bunch of us that's in this chat right now. I promise you. That's all That's all we want. We want some, we want some acres. We would love to have some acres of some land somewhere. Damn. Dre, I'm in NYC. I got to call Predatory Fans and see if they can. Oh, yeah, Predatory Fans. Are, man, tell them that you want to slide in one of those videos, Dre. Yeah, for sure. They'll take them. Oh, they'll take them. Matter of fact, they'll probably even take them and send them to um, Ohio Fish Rescue. Yeah. <laughs> Cody shipped them to us. <laughs> Cody said he'll take them. Yeah, KCM Aquatics, Cody said he'll take them. Yeah. Yeah, somebody want them for sure. I don't think Cody really want them. He don't know what he's trying to get himself into. It's all good to the future. It's all good. Uh, the saltwater house 
in a freshwater house for sure. Yep, a whole house. David, I need some acres. Man, <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. Anything over one acre is a blessing. You know, man, three acres? Shit. Yeah, need some acres for sure. Yeah. Kazi, what's up? What's up? What's up? I'm going to get some acres, though. I'm going to get some acres. One of these days, I missed up. I passed up a, a tremendous opportunity. Y'all y'all not in Cali, so y'all don't know what I, what I mean when I say this, but imagine that you see an acre of land that's probably, I think it was like 500 steps away from an area that's busy every year for camping. It's called Lake Comanche. It's a lake. Um, they do camping. They do barbecues. They do all this. You could rent boats and jet skis and all of that. The land was maybe like a, almost an acre of land, 500 steps from the, from, the, from the front entrance of it. And they only wanted, a, um, it was $11,000 for the piece of land. It was already appraised at $35,000, but, the, but uh, the pandemic just hit. COVID had just hit. So I was nervous. I was scared to go and invest that kind of money in it when I wasn't working. I didn't work for two years. So um, I was, you know, I was penny pinching. But I have never seen that kind of opportunity again. I mean, the land was, it was house. It wasn't like it wasn't even like a remote area. Like it was a house on the left. It was a house on the right. 11 grand. Already appraised at 35,000. I really wish I would have, I would have, I would have, I would have bought it. I wish I would have bought it. Even if I would have bought it to hold it, I wish I would have bought it. You know, here it is now, you know, all these years later, two two or three years later, and I still don't have no land. And, uh, you know, that opportunity is like one of those, like, lottos. You know, when you hit the lotto, you know, you probably got one in your lifetime. If you're very lucky, you'll get two, but you only might get one. I feel like that was that one right there. If I see something like that again, I'm on it. I'm on it. You have 10 sin ginger. You have 10 acres. But uh, it's from my family out in the country, and no telling how much money I'd have to pay to run electric and water out there. It's just a bunch of nothing out there. Hey, Zen Ginger, that happens a lot. Like when I look online, I'm always looking and trying to compare, seeing how much land is and things like that. When you want a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, you could get it for cheap. You could get it for cheap. But like you said, you know, there's nothing around. When you start talking about land that's, you know, close to something, close to people, it goes from being 10,000 to all of a sudden being 210,000. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yep. You know, I live in NC, about an hour from Charlotte. It's cheap out here. I have a six-car garage building here, and I'm thinking about making a fish room out there. I'm afraid I wouldn't go out there enough. Damn. Congrats, Kendall. That's what's up. Man, I'm happy for you. Yeah. A lot to um uh, a lot to think about. A lot of options. I mean, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> David, no, no acres here in Metal View. I know, I know, I know. We uh we we right next to each other. We right next to each other, David. I live in New Mexico, and I have not quite an acre. Okay, okay, Detroit, Detroit RB. Yeah, Kazi, I did a little Ricky mistake and bought a can of lactose in an enemy, and I just got clowns, but the enemy is too strong for the fish. And I can't find a home for it. What should I do? You might have to take that back. You might have to take that back, Kazi. That's what you're going to have to do. Regenerative. What's going on, Regenerative? Yes, you're right. That was a steal in California. And you know where, and you and you probably heard of Lake Comanche, so you know where Lake Comanche is. Yeah, it was a steal. A steal, man. I regret that to this day. You know, I tried to invest in, I, I tried to invest with somebody. You know, I didn't have 11 by myself, but I wouldn't win 55, 55. You know what I mean? Um, couldn't find anybody to invest with me. Sometimes it happens like that. But, man, if something like that pops up again, I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah. 
you know, I actually bought the house on a three acres because I grow a garden and have fruit trees and chestnut trees. Yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing to be able to just walk around some acres of land like that on your own property. And I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I would love to, you know, we don't have it like that out here. You know what I mean? We're in the city. You know, I'm in the city. So it's not like that. You know, if if we want one acre of land in the city, one acre of land in the city, we're going to spend at least 300000 You know what I mean? And it's still not even like remote. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's very different. Very different out here. But that's 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 lovely. You was looking for some land out in Wheatland. I know somebody. I'm, uh, what's the name? Live in Wheatland. Um, Hawaiian fish keeper. He lives in Wheatland. Yeah. I don't know where I would get some land at out here. You know, I, I, when I'm looking, I'm just looking at land that's like close to something. You know what I mean? That's close to something. So I'm not like so far out the way. And anything that's over a couple acres, but you know, what's for me is gonna be for me. I'm a strong believer in that what's for you is for you. You know what I mean? So when we were looking for houses, it was a lot of different options. You know, uh, we ended up getting this one. And then in, re in reality, this house was for us. You know, I was able to get two fish rooms. I was able to do some building on my property. You know, I built me a shed in the backyard. Um, my kid got the space, got the gate and all, and all of that. So when it comes to the time for me looking for land, you know, what, what's for me is going to be for me. And nothing is going to get in the way of that. So, yeah. Uh, Colin says, my grandparents have 50 acres here in Michigan. My grandpa rented some land for farmers and would make some money off their crops. Damn, 50 acres. Yeah, yeah. When you in the when you out in the sticks and you in these different states, like y'all got it. My aunt has around six hundred and fifty acres in Santa Monica Mountains and Thousand Oaks. She got the acres a while ago for cheap, cheap. Six hundred and fifty acres. So, so Kazi, when you have that many acres, do they require you to fence it in? Do you have to put a fence around your your uh, your property line? Damn. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm about to I'm about to look up some acres right now while I when I'm, while uh, while we talking. Hold on, let me catch up real quick. Grew up in uptown Manhattan. Nothing about this chat makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm already I'm already knowing into the future. I'm already knowing we old man. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, you know. We could want, but you probably have to move like to Jersey to get some land, though. Regina looking at 15 acres in southeast Texas. Fuck, you can harvest thousands of gallons of water in the desert. People are doing this more with large water storage tanks cheaper than wells. Man. Yeah, we need to connect, Regina, because I definitely want to know some more about this shit. Because, I, you know, it's all about saving. Y'all finna meet some aliens in the meadows. <laughs> yeah. That's hella funny. Kyle and my grandpa passed away 2020, but the land is so beautiful. I wish I made enough to keep it. Yeah, Colin. Yeah, it's definitely expensive. It's definitely expensive. But the neighbors own a ton too, and they're like family to us. They got horses and a huge pond. That they let us fish on. Damn, fish on. That is a huge pond. Talk about fish on it. Not in it, but on it. Damn. Yeah, please take some photos, Colin. Please take some photos. It's crazy because the town my grandpa grandparents live in is actually turned into a college town. So it's crazy not far from the city. That's what's up. All right, David, you have a good one. You have a good one. You have a good one. All right, I'm about, to look, I'm about to look up some of these acres real quick. I just want to give you all an idea of what these acres cost out here. All right, Zillow. I use Zillow. I don't know what y'all use. Zillow, acres. All right, Zillow. Lots for sale. Let's see. 
Let's see what these. All right. Probably got to do Cali. Uh, all right, let's see. 25,000 lots for sale. It's a lot of areas. I don't even know where they're, where they're at, but look. So five acres of land, not even a full, 4.6 in Clovis. Ain't nothing there. 385. Kendall, no, I've never built an acrylic tank. I never built an acrylic tank. Jan, how you doing? How you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing really good. How about yourself? Oh, shit. now this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is what I'm talking about. 36 acres of land. Damn. 36 acres of land right here. Probably in the middle of nowhere. 249. 249. Okay, Kazi, she has fencing around a property. Only on the road, but the neighbors each have around 300 plus. So the line between properties isn't really established. It's mostly mountains. Damn. Yeah, I would think it would be, though, when uh, when you're saying 650, though, Kazi. Damn. That's what's up. What fish you think we can get to put in the pond? I was wanting to get some electric jet blue jacks to raise up. And get a breeding pair and maybe a marijuana. But every time I had one, they jumped out. All right, Jane, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. And Cody, um, you know that's why I built that facade around my pond, right? So so the marijuana won't jump out. So if you're having issues with your marijuana jumping out, just build a facade around it. You know what I mean? My era, Kobe can't jump out of that. You know, he'll literally hit the hit the um the shelf and he'll have he'll go back in the water. So um build a facade around it. That will definitely prevent him from being able to jump out. Some people use a net. I don't really think I don't like the net idea. I don't like the way it looked. You know, if you put a facade on it just like how I did, and I'm not saying you gotta replicate what I did, but when you build that facade, you could put some shelves in there, put some plants around it, you can make it look a little bit better than if you just had a net covering it up all the time. You know, I hate having a net cover up my um my pot. You know what I mean? It just doesn't look good. Um, but as far as fish, I don't really recall what all you have in there right now. I know that 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 um that catfish might cause some problems because it's big. Um, what size pond do you have again? I forgot. Oh, you say you don't got the money like that to build the facade? It's not that expensive, man. It's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. Just apply wood, get you some two by fours uh, for each corner. I mean, you could go as cheap as possible. You could probably spend about, and you could use OSB. You don't have to use expensive um, plywood. So what are we looking at? We're looking at one, two, one, two, three, four, five, roughly. So about five pieces of plywood. That's like a hundred bucks. And the two by fours, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably like a hundred and fifty bucks. You got a hundred and fifty bucks and some peacock bass, you could definitely do that. Cause my aunt's house is about a mile deep into the property. Golly. And she has four wolf hybrid dogs, 80% wild, 20% dog. They keep all male lions away and the animals we keep on a property. That's sick, Kazi. That's sick. I seen on TikTok somebody that has like um, some hybrid wolf, wolf canines, and they look, they look insane. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm still looking at this land. Look at this, though. 10 acres of land for 100000 But it's in the middle of nowhere, though. In the middle of nowhere. A little camper on the property. Yeah, Kazi, I bet you they are cool. Colin, hang on them back. Or sponge filter set up for it better. Sponge filter. Easier. Sponge filter. I like to look up Sacramento. Yeah. <laughs> you you don't have no carpentry, but you got welding, man. I wish I had some of those welding skills. <laughs> yeah, man. Kazi, it's all about where you would like to be. You guys will definitely find a good property. Yeah, I got a we got a property. I need some land. I need some land. Kendall, hey, if I can use a saw, you can too. See, look, you hear that, Cody? Kendall says she could use a saw. So if she could use a saw, so can you. You definitely got it. I know you got it. But yeah, look at. Yeah, I don't even know what this is. But that's actually that's not even a half acre of land right there. Okay, now look, 500,000, this is in Sacramento, 500,000 for 2.4 acres of land, and I don't even know what the hell this is, but 500K, the fact that it's in Sacramento, that's still good, but damn no, that's a lot. 700,000 for one. Oh, that's, that's nothing. We're right there. 200,000 for not even one acre of land. Yeah, it's expensive. World can strict a clean line can. I too can vouch for aquatic imports based out of Boulder. Purchased a small four inch back. Black wolf fish back in early 2019. Kept for about six months. He kept jumping. I sold him. Okay, thank you. I'm definitely going to um, look up aquatic imports. I'm going to look out. Probably get something. <laughs> right, right, Jane. Yeah, let's camper on a property out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they had to throw that in there. But yeah, maybe somebody will like that. Oh, I know what Bradshaw is. 29 acres of land. 29 acres of land. 2.9 million. Now, granted, you could definitely do a lot with that 27 acres, but yeah. They charge so much for land when you somewhere in the inner city or even near the city. But yeah, so that's what that's what that's what we own. That's what we own. We need to get we need to get some acres somewhere. This oh, this is off foreign road. Yeah, twenty one acres, two point seven. Yeah. Now, when you got a nice a nice team, that's why it's so so crazy that you can't really find. A team these days. When you got a nice team, you look at the 2.7, you divide that up by three people, you know, four people, five people, whatever the case may be, and y'all could come together and make that happen and then divide up them acres and start building. But it'd just be so hard for people to want to play a part. It's so hard for, for people to want to play a part. It's like everybody want to race against each other instead of looking at it like a relay race and everybody 
ran the same race together. How big does the woodfish you have get? Um, Cody, my woodfish only gets, I think, like eight inches. Let me see. It was a gift, so it ain't even like I really looked it up. But let me see what the rainbow, rainbow woodfish. Yeah, about eight inches. Don't get that big. Colin, I have a, I, I live in a camper. If I would, if I was not, well, if I, if you were out my way, you would live in a camper. Yeah, you're not, you wouldn't live in no camper out here. You wouldn't live in no camper out here, Colin. Kenna, we, yeah, we might have to move to the south, but Cali is so, the weather, the weather. We're not ready to move. Don't want to move. The weather is amazing out here. Colin, we got to get you to 100,000 subs so you can get some land. Yeah, Colin, I agree. I would love to, to get to 100,000 subs. I really would. Hopefully um, it happens sooner rather than later. And thank you, Jane, for, for agreeing with that. We got to get there. Got to get there. World Constrict Aquatic Imports, most importantly, was very professional with contacting me before they ship. A live animal packing and heat pack done very nicely. Fish are right in great shape. No leaking bags, bumps. Okay, okay. Right on, World Constrictor. Jane live in Alabama. I live in a nice neighborhood on Flint River. My house is 550K on two acres. Damn. Yeah, that's you building a pond? You gonna build your pond, Jane? Man. Woo! Alabama. I don't know if you watch uh, Bama Bass, but man, when they they bought 81 acres out there. 81 acres. Yeah, yeah. I keep on hearing that we gotta get up out of Cali, but you know, all our family from Cali, you know, can't really just up and just bounce like that and starting all the way over yeah yep 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 just sometimes you just gotta make do with the cards you've been dealt you know i'm gonna try to play these motherfucking cards as best as i can but yeah that's what's up though i stay in huntsville madison county which is north alabama Technically, technology capital, 4K square foot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's that's real good. Well deserved. But how about that pond, though? You going to build you a pond? Smitty, what's up? Into the future, dang, y'all giving me ideas. I'm solo dolo with three kids and a wife and tripping over myself. But shit, I need me some land. Yeah, we we on the same page, but I'm glad that this is causing you to look at things like that because that's what it takes. You know what I mean? That's what it takes sometimes, you know? Uh, a conversation will, you know, cut on a light bulb. And it's like, hold on, let me, um, I haven't really been looking into that, but let me look into it. So I'm glad that, I'm glad that this conversation is doing that for you. You looking at Jane? I'm looking into Aquascape to do a recreation pool pond, saving for it though. I'm happy for you. I can, man, I cannot wait to see this exclusive on Aquascape when they do that for you. I cannot wait to see that. I was I, I was gonna try to have Aquascape come do something for me too, but I got impatient. Got impatient. So. But yeah, maybe one of the maybe one day, maybe one day. Uh, Smitty, what's good? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? How you doing? Exactly, exactly. The recreation pond for the swimming, and it's a big pond for all that for all of your animals that you can learn and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I, you know, watching Aquascape is the reason why 
I even, you know, know about the recreation ponds. You know, I watch them do all the different YouTubers recreation ponds. And, you know, um, now that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Ken, Ken, what's going on with you, Ken? How you doing? How much do you usually pay for a good male African cichlid? I don't know how to sex African cichlids, Ken. I have absolutely no idea how to sex African cichlids. Could you tell me? I definitely would like to know. Uh, before I buy African cichlids, you know, I paid three for three for thirty nine ninety nine, so three for forty. Those are the ones that I typically buy right now. If I buy a large, when I bought the large um, male frontosa, how much I paid for him? I don't even know how much I paid for him. But I'm not paying that much for no African cichlids. I'm not paying that much for him. Now, if I know what I'm looking for, if I order it online and I specifically order what I'm looking for, I might be willing to pay a little bit more. But when I go to like a fish store and they have an aquarium full of assorted African cichlids, you know how they do the assorted, you know what I mean? Like that's when I pay a general price. Hold on. Babe, you about ready for me or you good? You about ready for me or you good? All right, babe, pops. Call him. Call him, babe. Be careful, pops. I love you. Say hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> mm, I love you. Ah. <laughs> He's like, I missed that. It's been a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, Carter is, uh, guess he's missing that. I'm going to have to wrap it up a little bit. Definitely family life. Uh, Kendall, pointed dorsal fins is a male, rounded is a female. Thank you, Kendall. Thank you, Kendall. I, I never knew that. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks, Jane. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ortega, I'm going to get a, an enemy this weekend, and I just did a water change. So when the enemy, the water is clean. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Ortega. An enemy, huh? Yeah, you know, I've had one an enemy in my life and it didn't work out, so I just put him on the, the not the don't buy list. Oh, uh, thanks, Kendall. Males sometimes have different shapes than the females. I usually look for some color, huh? Okay, okay. So, how do you tell with the OBs? Is there a way to tell with the OBs? I know I can tell with the eye-biter, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to do some research. i do some research. The kennel for sure just helped me out with the, um, with the, with the, with the, with the fins. Females have the pointed. Okay. Let me, uh, let me, let me look on, let me look real quick. I'm curious. African sick. Um, some people would be trying to vent them, but let me see. Okay, so male shape will be elongated, and the females will be rounded. Yeah, this does not apply for juvenile cichlids. All right. <laughs> yeah, well... Well, if this don't apply for the for the juveniles, that's not really that helpful because they always sell them as juveniles. At least I got something to go off of. At least I got something to go off of. 
So this one right here would be a male then, right? You said the males are Kindle. That would be a male, huh? With the pointed. All right, okay, okay. So definitely go with the fin shape. Thank you, Kendall. I appreciate that. Love learning something new. Why I need to know because I am going to get an anemone with my tank. But yours, I don't want to waste money. Is that if they are difficult? So, Jane, um, so I don't know why my anemone just hid from where I put it at. So the thing about an enemy is that they're going to go where they're comfortable at. Um, and so I put mine in one spot and it just kept on like moving. It wouldn't attach. It would not attach to the rock. And then so it just kept on moving and um, it kept going into an area that, you know, it was like a cave. It kept going into the cave. I bring it back out. You know, it wouldn't attach. Same thing. And it wouldn't eat. So it literally shrank to the point of non-existence. Okay, Keno, thank you. Yeah. You know, taught me something new. You know, taught me something new. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Let me try one more. Let me make sure I'm on let me uh make sure I'm on point. All right, so I'm gonna check out the females. Oh, that's gonna be a I see. Wow. Okay. And that's a female. That's a female, right, Kendall? Yeah. All right. I never noticed that before. I never noticed the fact that some was rounded. And some were pointy. Got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So now when I get when I get off this live, I'm about to go look at my African cichlids and see how many males and how many females I got, because I have no idea. Thank you. Thank you for teaching me this. I'm excited now. I can't wait to show Aida. Yeah. So I should probably, so do you recommend having a nice mixture of males and females in your African cichlid tank or having more males so it's not a lot of fighting? What do you, what do you, what do you do with yours? And it would be better with just males. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Let me see. I might have to check to see what I got. And Jane, it's all good. But that might not happen with you. It might not happen with you. You know, um, one of the things I have noticed is that um, also when enemies get really big, you know, they're nice. But you never know. I mean, if you really want one, you should try it. Um, just be prepared, you know, to have to. Um, you could either just take it back to the store and maybe get store credit if it's just not looking happy. The way that an enemy look in the store, that's kind of like how you want it to look in your aquarium. If it's not looking like that, you know, over the span of the next couple of days, you might want to consider taking it back. Robert, I don't think most people realize how good we have it with you and your uploads and you work and have a beautiful family. Thank you for the time you give us respect, my friend. Thank you so much, Robert. I really appreciate that. The fact that you do and that I definitely feel that a lot of y'all appreciate the time and energy that I put in, it just makes me want to put more in. So thank you so much. It's definitely... Uh, I definitely feel the energy that the energy that y'all that y'all put off in return is not one sided at all. 
it may be hard to tell on younger fish, but females won't show much color. I keep all males so they won't fight. That's what I heard. I heard getting more males. Somebody told me, <laughs> somebody told me that I need to get some females in there so the males will color up. I was like, that's going to cause more aggression. It's going to cause more aggression. Yeah, it's, it's a trip that some people have, you know, some people don't know, I feel like. Uh, Robert, I'm going to head out Cleveland once again. Thank you for the fun live and entertaining piece out chat. Those, if you're stopping and right quick, but still here, be sure to hit the like button. Thank you so much, Rob. I really appreciate you for stopping through. All the contribution. You have a great night. And uh, I'll talk to you later, my friend. Yeah, we got a couple hours in. Y'all, we got a couple hours in. So um, I don't want to be the one to to just stop it right now, but we have to, I'm about to make some enchiladas. I'm about to make some salsa verde enchiladas. Yes, your boy know how to cook. I know how to get down. I be getting it in in the kitchen, so I'm about to have to go in there and do some cooking. So um, I'll make sure that I save y'all a plate. But other than that, I appreciate all of y'all for contributing to the conversation tonight. Thank you for making me feel the, um, the welcomeness Probably not even a word, but nonetheless, you know what I'm saying. Thank you for making me feel welcome. Thank you for entertain, being entertaining as well. Thank you for all of the support that I've gotten. Make sure y'all hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Make sure y'all have liked the video before we end this video. And uh, Johnny Racer, man, yeah, we got to catch you next time, man. I appreciate you for stopping through. Peace, I appreciate you for stopping through. I don't know when I'll do it again. Maybe tomorrow. Not quite sure yet. But nonetheless. I had an amazing time with all of you. Thank you so much, Kendall. I really appreciate you for educating me. And um, we had a good time. We had a good time talking about acres, living vicariously through y'all, giving me some ideas, hopefully giving some other people some ideas and all of that. But uh, yeah, have a great night. I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all probably tomorrow or the following day. Have a good one. Peace out, everybody.